Hello again, citizens. This is episode number 12 of The Whole Truth for the week of 9 December 2013. The only show where we hear Valley Forge and think of a spaceship full of trees and wildlife. Let's get started with the RSI website recap. Another week, another stretch goal reached. In the letter from the chairman for $34 million, we unlocked the MISC Hull C Discreet. This is a standard goods transport ship that is sometimes used to haul illegal goods using advanced sensor shadow technology. It features a quick decompressed hold and a variety of hidden compartments, but still appears as a standard transport. Interesting. We were also asked to vote on a major feature of the next system, and the winning vote was a location on the event horizon of a black hole. So for the $36 million goal, we're going to unlock the TAMSA system. The massive central star of TAMSA has collapsed into a black hole and has possibly engulfed two planets already. Two planets are still there, a Chthonian world and a gas giant that are slowly being pulled towards the black hole. Uh, we're also asked to vote on the next location we want to see in Star Citizen. I voted for the fully aquatic planet because I hope that means they have to make futuristic boats. Who doesn't want futuristic boats? I know I do. We've also got a new lore builder this week. This is the final week for Seda Ball votes and now we're on to Pirates Galore. The rule set for Seda Ball has been narrowed down to three choices and you can vote on the one that you want to make it into the final game. We also got some samples of NPC organizations that were thought up and written by community members and some of these things are pretty good so make sure you click on the link down below and go and check those out after the video is over. There's a new galactic guide for the Goss system. The Goss system is the epitome of natural beauty on a grand scale. In this system you can find three planets including Goss 2, Cassell, which is the home of the famous Midas fish. The next great starship competition deadline is coming up. You have until December the 31st, 2013 to get your submissions in. Uh, one team is going to be awarded $30,000 in a competition that Star Citizen fans will be able to vote on to help their favorite ships and teams win. We had another lore entry on the website entitled This Day in History. This one is about the story of a boy that began his life in the slums but ended up being the sad catalyst that started the fall of the Messer era and some of the details that surround that. Make sure you catch up on these uh, little lore posts. They're very good and they really help to sort of flesh out the world and build anticipation for living in that universe. We got two Meet the Dev posts this week, one for Sean Murphy, the Art Outsource Manager, and one for Joshua Alway, the programmer we saw two hangers ago. And last but certainly not least on the website this week, we got an update on how organizations are going to work. This is an epically long post, so I'm going to detail it out for you as concisely and quickly as I can. Setup. You're going to be prompted to select a name and unique ID for your group. You will also have to set up a public page on the RSI site including a logo, a banner, and a background for your page as well as choosing a preset color theme. You can enter info on your org's history, your manifesto, and your charter. With that, you can start recruiting. You're going to be able to pick an organization type, view your member list, assign new recruits and ranks, and roles to members. There are five organization types, but these are all for RP purposes and they won't affect anything in-game. You can join an org by applying through the group's page or by invitation from the group itself. You can enable or disable public recruiting. Players can come and go as they please, but may only join one organization at a time. Orgs can establish two pieces of info about each member, their rank and their role. Roles are user-defined subgroups inside an org that define a job assigned. An example would be if you're a robot, your role might be comic relief. Orgs get a set of six ranks to assign. You can name these ranks anything you like. Organization names will not be unique. An unlimited number of groups can be called stuff like Rogue Squadron, but every org will have a unique Spectrum ID or SID, S-I-D. This is a 10 character, all caps, alphanumeric designation. The SID will be used in the org's URL and will be displayed prominently with the name to distinguish similar groups. The chat role is going away. A new XMPP based live chat system will be added to the RSI site. This eliminates the 500 user limit and you will be able to connect from outside the site using any XMPP compatible client. This will also include the addition of organization specific chats. The official forums will also get some small changes and you can also now use your upgrades in the My Hangar section of the website. If you purchased an upgrade for a ship, you can now apply it. It will change the overall value and allow you to see the enhanced ship in your hangar. Once the upgrade is used, it is gone. The F7A Hornet body kit that we got, it's an upgrade item for use in the finished game like a skin and it cannot be applied through this system. Public testing of the organization system begins later this month 
and there's a planned rollout for January. More are going to be dropped during the year, including organization forums, blogs, a visual chart of divisions, jobs, and members, a fleet view to see all of your org ships, a calendar, and a voting system. Man, that is a lot of cool stuff. I'm looking forward to this almost as much as the dogfighting module. I can't wait to get it up and running and get some of you guys in the organization. Now it's time for the Wingman's Hangar recap. There's supposedly a hangar update coming this week. Uh, there's not a whole lot of details on that yet. They also stated there would be one more before Christmas. We also get a quick look at PBR and use on an engine from the 300i. It's not quite as impressive as the Avenger video that we saw before, but it is another indication of all the work the team is putting in on these ships. I can't wait to see the whole ship decked out in glorious PBR. An update on Foundry 42 finds Aaron Roberts talking about capital ship battles, fleets, and the work they're doing on how you navigate through the game, how mining works, and how AI works for space combat. Everything they do in Squadron 42 is supposed to also make its way into the persistent universe. Moving on to the forum feedback recap. This week we have a new segment called 10 for the Chairman where Chris is answering 10 questions Starting it off though with Eric, Ben, and Rob as usual. Will you be able to eject before your ship is destroyed or only after? Ben says you better eject before your ship is destroyed because if you don't, it's too late. Can you overclock your power core and run it above the red line to increase power to the thrusters and or energy based weapon systems or even to feed more power to your shields at the risk of damaging or destroying the power plant or relevant components? The guys answer, it's not just weapons, you can overclock different components on your ship, so the important thing is that you have to be careful because you can burn it out, destroy it, or run with a lot of extra heat which makes you easier to spot. Will there be ship inspections to determine if ships are safe to operate? Rob says, it's not a bad idea, it's not really something we've thought about too much but I think it sounds cool. Ben said, we're building those way stations for the jump points. Will we get some sort of livable area? I mean the hangar is cozy and all. But is there a possibility of living somewhere like in an apartment or in a house planet side? Rob said, we're going to do something like that. We're going to do a hangar expansion system. Eric says, that's a good point. We're currently working on a hangar expansion system. You'll get a taste of that as we go through the next few months where you'll have a living quarters. If I have an LN and an LX and I apply an LN token to my LX when my boys are covering my six, can I then remove it later and just use the LX as my exploration ship? Or does that burn that token and turn it into another LN for good? Ben says, once it's used, it's used. The upgrades aren't something you're going to pick up in the game. You're actually going to apply them to your ships. Starting today on the website, you can turn the ship in your package into the upgrade you purchased. Rob said, it's one upgrade per ship. You can't apply multiple upgrades to one ship. In the instance of ship damage for instance failure of one engine on a dual engine ship, will the ship's flight computer control the output in such a way to keep the ship flying in a straight line? while the controls are neutral, or will it be pi the pilot's job to compensate for such disturbances? Rob said, I think it's going to try to compensate as much as it can, but there's a point of no return. At some point, you don't have enough thruster left. Alright, this is the section 10 for the chairman where Chris Roberts is answering all of these questions. I'm curious to know about the hardware setup required to run Star Citizen in full HD on max details. Chris said it's hard to define that right now, but if you have a top of the line card now, then when the game releases you should be able to run it at max settings on a 1080p resolution. If you want to go higher than that, you're going to need a newer graphics card or you're going to need SLI graphics cards. Now that CIG has development infrastructure ready, are you toying with new ideas for future projects after Star Citizen is released? Some vague schedules for bigger expansions to Star Citizen or Squadron 42 or even for non-Star Citizen related projects? Chris says, we're 100% focused on Star Citizen here. Once it's released, that won't be the end of it. We're planning to release content on a very regular schedule, almost weekly if we can. So we'll be constantly updating the Persistent Universe, adding new features, locations, ships, characters. Then we'll also do some additional story segments similar to Squadron 42. Will radar shadow be present in the game? Chris says, yes, we have all different kinds of radar signatures. Whether it's a heat, electromagnetic, or reflective signature, and we're also thinking of different ways that you could shield yourself from someone else detecting you. Maybe you can shield yourself by hiding in an asteroid. Or maybe you can shut down a bunch of systems so your signature is really small. Or you could cover your ship in a certain kind of armor that could give you a much lower reflective signature. So we'll definitely have radar shadow as part of that. Is the plan to just make dogfighting an arena style shoot em up? Or is there going to be some more specific scenarios to test? Chris says, in the very first iterations of dogfighting, there will mostly be arena-style shoot-em-ups. 
head-to-head -head or flying against AI or maybe two teams. Maybe later on we'll do some scenarios, but the idea of the dogfighting isn't really to deliver a fully-fledged game. This is for us to test the back-end infrastructure for the multiplayer, the balancing of the ships, and seeing if the flight model and everything is fun. I'm interested to learn what Chris's personal preference is for his HOTUS with Star Citizen. Does he prefer pitch and roll on the stick or pitch and yaw? Chris says generally it's been a pitch and yaw setup. I'm playing around with the idea that we have g-forces on pilots. As a human, you can take greater gravity in the vertical than the lateral. That's why modern pilots will roll and turn. So right now the default is a pitch and yaw with roll on the pedals. But that may actually change the pitch and roll on the joystick and yaw on the pedals. Can you clarify the PvP slider? I see a lot of threads where people believe this affects the entire game, where I believe it to only affect random encounters during autopilot. Chris says, the PvP slider is an input to the game's matchmaking system to give us a hint to who it should be matching with. When you fly around in space, the server looks at where you are and sees if there is someone close to you or if there's an AI close to you. It will tell the local client that this person is close to you and the person or AI will be streamed into the instance. The PvP slider is an extra variable for the matchmaking criteria. The matchmaking criteria is on a whole bunch of things. Ping, your friends, your enemies, your people of interest, some level of skill rating, uh, e.g. new player skill or super experienced. If you prefer to have more PvE than PvP, it would preference to the AI flying around rather than a real player. So if there's an AI pirate and a real pirate, it would drop the AI pilot into your instance. You would definitely get other players streamed into your space that wouldn't be hostile, so you would definitely get some more of a co-op sort of game. If you're in a certain area of space where there's no holds barred, it could definitely be a hostile player. You can definitely have some NPCs that can be tougher than any player could ever be. We're not going to let you change the slider dynamically as you fly around. Are you willing to redesign the cockpits, the size of the displays, fonts, field of view, etc. once the final specs of the Oculus Rift consumer version are known if you think that's what's needed to be playable or enjoyable with the Oculus Rift? Chris says, I would say that the Oculus Rift works correctly. We shouldn't have to do that and we would not be redesigning ships or cockpits or anything for one peripheral we are going to work with. I will say we are pretty in sync with the Oculus developers and I would say that our current setup will work very well with it. In the dogfighting module, how will ammunition and missiles be handled if there is no store or economy to reload? Chris basically says, to sum it up, it's a very long answer, that uh, when you go to your hangar, you'll refill. When you go out in space to fight, you can't refill until you come back to your hangar once you're done. What module do you plan next after dogfighting? Chris says, the module we're planning to do right after dogfighting is the planet side module. That is the module focused on planet side environments, going into a space bar or into shops to buy and sell items or goods. It's also referred to as the social module because other players will be allowed in the shared space to test the MMO backend. Is the plan to release Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe at the same time or will one come out before the other? Chris basically says that they want to release Squadron 42 before the Persistent Universe is finished but they don't want to do this in an alpha state because it wouldn't make sense because the game is a story based game and you need to be able to play it through. They've also tinkered with the idea of releasing it as an episodic thing. Uh, they basically said that they want to make sure that it is finished properly before they give it to us. And then once it is fully finished, when people get it in the future, they'll get the whole package at once. Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe. Alright, now it's time for other news. So in other news this week, a game called No Man's Sky was announced at the Spike VGX Awards. The game devs boast an exploration sim that's procedurally generating everything, from the stars right down to the floor on a planet. In the video trailer, they show exploration on a planet on foot, then entering a spaceship, leaving the atmosphere, ending up in space, and then heading to a distant place using a jump drive. The game is supposed to be very massive and all about exploration, although the video does show some dogfighting and giant ships as well. The game will have a persistent world and is being created by Hello Games. You gotta check this one out. The trailer is really cool and it's making me think it might be fairly decent. Also in other news this week, the game Starbound made by Chucklefish released in beta on Steam and their website for $15 US. I have to say it's one of the best incomplete beta releases of a game that I've ever played. I spent many hours live streaming this game last week and it is a lot of fun. It's basically Terraria with a sci-fi setting where you can get in your spaceship and travel to an infinite amount of other systems and land on those planets. The base game is better than Terraria though and in my opinion a lot of the systems in the game work better than they do in Terraria. 
The game is also moddable and the mods have already started rolling out. For $15 I've already put 31 hours into the game and I've gotten nowhere near the end of the current content. If you decide to pick this up this week just be aware there's a big patch coming this week and it's supposedly going to render your characters unusable. Just keep in mind it is a beta. It's a very good beta though. Now it's time for the r slash star citizen post of the week. This week it goes to Lord Bork who created an FAQ for people just getting into star citizen. He answers a lot of the very common questions as well as giving a bunch of links at the bottom of the page to help people out. There's a lot of excellent info in the thread. Thank you Lord Bork for supporting your star citizen and reddit communities. We had 5,000 subscribers on YouTube this week and we also got partnered on Twitch. Thank you guys so much. If you ever wonder why I say we a lot, it's because this is a community of people and it's all about you guys. I consider the most important thing to be developing the community. We are creating a place here where people can go without fear of judgment or elitism. And as a thank you for helping me do that, I'm going to give away an Origin M50 with LTI, no strings attached. I'm going to put a link up to the website that you guys can click on and go and get signed up and I will announce the winner on the next episode of The Whole Truth next Monday. So we've come to the end of another episode, and it's very important for everyone to remember. Whatever you do, wherever you go this week, take a trusty towel with you, and I'll see you all again next Monday for The Whole Truth.